Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be comparing the specs and the performance of six different single board computers, all based on an ARM processor. And specifically, we're going to be looking at a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus versus a ROC64, a ROC Pro64, an Odroid XU4, the Tinkerboard S, and for good measure, the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So, here we have our six ARM-based single board computers, and if you're thinking, why have I chosen these six boards? Well, they just happen to be six of my favorite boards from my collection. There are other ARM-based single board computers out there. I haven't reviewed all of them yet. I hope to review more on the channel in the future. But uh, these six boards, I think, are nicely representative of the sort of ranges of boards we have on the market with, with ARM-based processors. In terms of the machine's capabilities, it's worth noting that three of these boards have got USB 3 connectors. Do you know which ones they are? Yes, they are the Odroid XU4, the ROC64, and the ROC Pro64. The other three boards here are USB 2 only. If we turn to the board's processor cores, you'll see the first three boards have got A53 cores, about the same speed, although the ROC Pro64 has also got a couple of extra A72 cores. It's a six core board. And then the Odroid XU4 is an eight core board, an octa core single board computer, four A7s and four A15s. The Tinkerboard S is then a quad core board, and the Raspberry Pi Zero W is a single core board. And it's worth pointing out that the first three boards here have got 64-bit CPU, 64-bit cores. Those are the A53s and the A72s on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, ROC64, ROC Pro64. Whereas the other three boards here, their cores are 32-bit. And this might make a difference as we get through to tests later on. In terms of GPU, we've got these listed here. And in terms of RAM, you'll see there's a variance of RAM on these boards all the way from half a gigabyte up to four gigabytes. And it's nice to see a choice of RAM on the ROC Pro 64 and the ROC 64 boards. In terms of storage, the Raspberry Pi boards are limited to either booting from microSD or in the case of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, you can boot from USB. But the other boards here have got a choice of onboard storage. You can either use a microSD card for booting or you can use EMC flash. And to be specific here, the Tinkerboard S has got 16 gigabytes of onboard flash storage you can boot from, whereas the ROC64, the ROC Pro64, the Odroid XU4 have got a slot on the board, a connector on the board, you can add an EMC flash module. When it comes to prices, here are the best prices I could find at the end of August 2018 in dollars. I know that on top of this, you would have various taxes and carriage, depending on where you are in the world. I can't really account for that in these figures. And you'll see we've got a range of prices here. Finally, here's a table showing you the system I'm actually going to test. I had a lot of debates with myself about how do I boot these boards in the test? Do I boot them all, for example, from microSD? And in the end, I decided I would boot the Raspberry Pis and the ROC64 from microSD, but the more expensive boards I'd boot from the EMMC flash. So with the Tinkerboard S, I'm booting from its onboard EMMC flash storage, but with the ROC Pro64 and the Odroid XU4, I'm going to boot from a 16 gigabyte EMMC flash module. Right, just before I do the performance tests, I want to talk to you right down the camera about operating systems, because I'm not going to be running the same Linux distro on all of these six boards during these tests. And I'm sure some of you are already going, that's terrible, you've got to run the same software on, on each board to have a fair test. And in an ideal world, you're right. But I'm here going to be pragmatic. So I'm going to run the operating system that is most associated with the board, the one the manufacturers most probably expect you to download, the one that's going to have the drivers, etc., optimized for the board. So specifically here on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, I'm going to be running Raspbian. On the ROC64, I'm going to be running Debian, Debian Stretch Mate. On the ROC Pro64, I'm going to be running a version of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 18.4 with an LXDE desktop. On the Odroid XU4, I'm going to be running Ubuntu Mate again. On the Tinkerboard, I'm going to be running Tinker OS, their version of Debian. And on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, again running Raspbian. And I think those are the operating systems that are going to give us the best performance on these boards, the best drivers, etc. And even if I wasn't taking this pragmatic view, and I know some of you won't like that view, there isn't a single operating system available I can install on all these boards. Um, so 
there's no way I can run the same one unless I went to something very minority and compile things just for the board for this test. That's going to be ridiculous. I want to show you a test of what most people who get one of these boards would actually see in terms of performance. And I would just on the end of this just point out more broadly, we're talking here about ARM processor single board computers. We're not talking about XXX PCs where you can go and get a, a distro of Linux off the shelf, anyone you want, install it on the board. You have to have an image of your operating system available for the board. It has to have drivers for the board, and that constrains what we can do. Anyway, you might like this decision, you might not, but let's now move on and do some software tests. Right, I thought we'd start with a boot test, see how long these boards take to boot up. And a couple of things to say about this before I run the process. The first one is that the screens here are being recorded by pointing a camera at a monitor, so you're getting an absolutely accurate reflection of the time it takes for the whole boot process. And the second point to make is I couldn't find a way to automate the logon process for the ROC64, the ROC Pro64, and the Odroid XU4. So during the boots for those machines, you'll see there'll be a login prompt presented. When that happens, the clock will freeze for two seconds as I go through the login process, and then it will continue. Is that the best thing to do? I've no idea, but I could not find any utilities on these boards to actually automate the process of logging in. Uh, it may be possible with some sort of scripting somewhere, but I haven't had the time to go through that process. Anyway, let's uh, hit the magic power button at exactly the same moment for all the boards. And uh, there they go. And uh, the Raspberry Pis are very nice because they give you something on screen to show you something is happening. I wish other boards did that. All oh, the Rock 64 showing something as well now. Which one's going to boot up quickest? Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? Watching all these single board computers together. And um, oh, the login prompt for the Rocks Pro 64 arrived earlier, but as I think you can see here, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has won on 18.8 .8 seconds. Closely followed by uh, the Rock Pro 64 21.2, the Tinkerboard S at 21.3, the Rock 64 on 27.2, and the Odroid XU4 on 32.4. And the Raspberry Pi Zero is still going. And I want to say I put the Raspberry Pi Zero in here just to remind us how far the Raspberry Pi has come to get the, the latest version with the Pi 3B+. Plus. I really like the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's a great little board for, for the money. It's fantastic value. And uh, yes, it's got there as well. 56.9 seconds for the Raspberry Pi Zero. So there we are, a comparison of the boot time for all these boards. Right, for my next trick, we're going to run the Sysbench CPU test. And here we are in a Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. And we've got a terminal window open where you can see the syntax you need to use to run the Sysbench test. And I should say, if you want to run this test, you have to install Sysbench on your computer first, using the, the syntax in the terminal, as you can see on the screen here. And I should also note that the syntax for this test will be slightly different on the different boards because the number of threads needs to be set to a number of processor cores on the boards. So here, for example, it's set to four for the, the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Anyway, let's uh, kick this thing off and uh, there it goes. And uh, we won't uh, watch this in real time. We'll speed through to the end. And uh, here we are, it has finished. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has taken 79.5 seconds to complete the Sysbench CPU test. So let's move on to another board. Let's move to the ROC64. And uh, here we are again, so I'll uh, let the thing kick off. And uh, this I'm going to allow to run all the way through because um, there we are, it's finished. 7.1 seconds. That doesn't seem credible, doesn't it, given that we had 79.5 for the Raspberry Pi 3B. Plus, but I have, I should say, run all of these tests many times and I've got very, very consistent results to within 0.1 of a second. So that's a good result on the, the ROC64. Let's move on actually now, just look at the ROC Pro64, just to give us a, another benchmark against this. So here we are on the ROC Pro64. You'll see the syntax here is slightly different because it's running a more recent version of Sysbench than the other boards. It's running version 1.0 point something, whereas on all the other boards, the version of Sysbench is 0 0.4 point something. And if you're thinking, why is it so far back? Remember, this is not standard Linux. This is ARM Linux, and we don't necessarily have everything at the latest version on these boards. Anyway, it should give us the same results. So let's run this thing. And uh, again, I'll stay in the real time because it's going to be a fast result because, of course, I've, I've seen these results already. And um, there we are, 10 seconds dead. 
And if you're thinking, well, of course, it's because you've got a slightly different syntax for the sysbench command. Here it is with the syntax I would have on the, all the other boards. So we'll run this. And uh, you'll see it'll give me an error about that because of depreciated commands. But again, we'll have exactly the same result. Yes, there we are, 10.0 seconds. So that's uh, clearly a very fast result. I suspect this might be because we've got a 64-bit processor on the rock board and it's actually running on a 64-bit operating system. I don't know. Anyway, let's move to another board. Our next board is Odroid XU4. And again, Sysbench here is set up, so I'll uh, press the button and uh, it'll take a second. So we'll go through out of real time. And here we are, 38.7 seconds for the Odroid XU4, much more towards the territory of the time taken by the Raspberry Pi 3B. Plus. So we'll move on, we'll do the Tinker board. Here we are in the Tinker OS with its terminal window open. Again, I'll press the button. Sysbench has started, and again, we'll move out of real time. And here we are, a result of 65.3 seconds. And finally, we'll move back into Raspbian with the Raspberry Pi 0. W and uh, we'll kick this off and of course we'll move out of real time for this. This is a very long test so we'll speed through the minutes as if by magic. And here we are, the Raspberry Pi Zero W has finished off on 620.5 seconds. Wow! Remember it's a single core machine compared to all the others here which are at least quad core, got a slower single core processor and, and there we are. It always seems cruel to make the Raspberry Pi Zero W run that test. Anyway, let's put all those numbers onto a table here next to results we have already. They are quite bizarre. I, I, I don't really know what to make of those rock results other than the fact it might be to do with having a 64-bit processor. There we are. I will leave you to ponder and we'll move on to another test. So... Here I am back again, still slightly bemused by those uh, Sysbench results, but I'm now on a Rock Pro 64 and I'm running GIMP, the, uh, the photo editing program. And I'm going to apply a filter to a large image. And the image here is actually 3,600 by 2,400 pixels, so it's quite a large image. And if you want to duplicate this test on your machine, you'll need exactly the same image to uh, apply the filter to, and I'll make it available by a link in the video description. Anyway, what we're going to do just to show you the test before we run it on all the machines is to go to uh, Filters and then we're going to uh, Edge Detect and to uh, inside there to uh, Neon and then we'll come up with that and we'll use the default settings as all these and if we just press OK here, it'll run through the process. I've, I've chosen to show it you on the uh, Rock Pro 64 because it is fast and uh, after a second or two, it'll give us that uh, wacky result of finding the edges in that image. So we'll now move to a shot of all six boards together, all primed up, raring to go to apply the same filter to the same image in GIMP. And I will hit the OK button at exactly the same time for all the boards. And uh, there they go. And clearly the Rock Pro 64 is powering through. You can see its progress bar there almost finished. Uh, 7.5 seconds for the Rock Pro 64, but closely followed by the Tinkerboard S at 8.8. .8. Very different results to what we saw with Sysbench. Raspberry Pi 3B plus 14.0. Oh, they're all falling rapidly here, aren't they? Rock 64, 16.8. Odred XU4, 17.2. And of course, the Raspberry Pi 0 is still going. These tests are really interesting, I think, compared to what we've just seen in the Sysbench test. This is a real world test. This is doing something on a machine. And clearly, the optimization of the software on the board here is going to be massively important in terms of both the operating system and even GIMP itself. So, it's difficult to interpret these. Let's let the Raspberry Pi Zero just finish off. It won't take a second, surely by now. Come on, Raspberry Pi Zero, you can do it. Again, it seems cruel to make a Raspberry Pi Zero run this kind of thing, but it's, it's capable of it. It just takes it a while to get there. But oh yes, we can see it's now finishing off, painting in the image on the screen, and it'll finish off on, what, 62.2 seconds. And if we put those results onto our table with all our other results, it is a tricky table to interpret, isn't it? I think one of the things I take from this is that clearly... Spending $43 on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or a Rock 64 gives you a lot more performance than buying a Raspberry Pi Zero. Having said that, of course, you don't always need all this power, and $18 for a Raspberry Pi Zero is still very good value for a computer. It can do all the things it can. But clearly, there's a step point in, in performance for price when you get to the, the first two boards here. After that, uh, you pay a lot more relatively for the Rock Pro 64, Odoid X4, Tinkerboard S. You do get more performance, there's no doubt. But... Um, 
Whether you need it is we can debate and exactly how much you get, it depends on which test you look at. I, I think the GIMP test is a far more realistic test of actual real world performance than you get from the Sysbench test here, which clearly I, I'm still slightly be bewildered by, but I have repeated these tests again and again and the results are very, very consistent. So um, I think I'll uh, for now just leave you to ponder over these. these. These are interesting results, strange results, but they're the results I've got and therefore the results I've showed you. So, here we are at the end of the video. And for me, this video has been a bit of a battle. I've had real difficulty getting some of the shots, getting some of the single board computers to be recorded properly. I haven't done as many tests as I wanted to because I've simply run out of time. And occasionally I work on a video and I think, I'm going to have to abandon this, do something else. And this video almost got abandoned. This time yesterday I was thinking, you will have to make something entirely different for this Sunday very, very quickly. But I haven't done that. We've got to the end. Hurrah! Here we are. And I hope you've taken something from this 6 SBC comparison. Personally, I'm still musing on those results in the Sysbench test from the ROC64 and the ROC Pro64. Are they really that much better at factoring prime numbers than the other boards? Perhaps they are. They've got 64-bit processors. Yes, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has got a 64-bit processor as well, but it's got a 32-bit operating system. So maybe the rock boards just are very good at our Sysbench test. And I have read around a bit, and on the web there are some indications that is the case. Other people have got very good results in the Sysbench test on the, the Rock and the Rock Pro board. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.